inevitably there will be differences uh, when it comes to hard choices, especially over rationing energy, for example, or reducing the demand of key countries such as Germany, uh, Italy and others that have depended enormously on Russian gas and, and oil also. Uh, Britain doesn't depend on gas or oil from Russia. Uh, it only imports 3% of its gas from Russia, but it's affected by the world market. And of course, as winter comes and people begin to feel the energy prices going up and up and the cold is going to be difficult, Inevitably, there will be a lot of talk about should we try to push for a deal with Russia to stop this war that is costing so much, not only for the Russians and the Ukrainians, but also for the rest of the Europeans. I don't think there will be any weakening of the support for Ukraine, but it will be a tough time and there will be quarrels between the different European nations on what to do. Each European has a different set of priorities. Uh, Hungary is very um, mild in its reproof of Russia. It has fairly, it had fairly warm relations with Russia. And Orban is a fellow who uh, had a close relationship with Putin. They're both extremely authoritarian people running an authoritarian government with little tolerance for any opposition. Uh, other countries have uh, a much tougher attitude towards Moscow and uh, they have different needs. Some countries, such as Italy, are desperate for uh, energy from Russia because they depended enormously on that. Uh, and it's difficult to find an alternative straight away. Uh, Italy has a new government led by a far-right prime minister, but I don't think the policy there will change very much on Russia. Um, most European countries uh, are taking a fairly tough line. There are nevertheless uh, talks uh, or calls for uh, a change in policy, calls for negotiations uh, over Ukraine. I don't think we'll see much change at the moment. Well, I think European diplomacy would like to act together in unison to find a solution. But the fact is that you can't replace gas and oil um, imports straight away. Where else will you find large amounts of gas available? The one country that can help and is helping is Norway, where they have an enormous amount of gas and oil from the sea. Britain also has oil and gas in the North Sea, but most of it has already been exploited. There are still uh, reserves that can and will be exploited, but it takes time. It takes time to open up the new oil, oil fields. The one uh, quick solution would be to increase the import of liquefied natural gas, uh, that comes mostly from Qatar and the Middle East. Uh, enormous numbers of ships bring liquefied gas to Europe, but you need to build the terminals to receive these ships. Germany is building several as quickly as possible, but it still will take several months. And it's not easy to replace oil and gas overnight. That's almost impossible. Uh, they're importing what they can from elsewhere, from Algeria, from America, uh, building pipelines, building terminals but we won't see much difference for at least uh, four or five months. It's lucky that Europe has been able to fill its reserves. Uh, their reserves were quite low. Uh, some or two, one or two countries, Britain included, had very low reserves. They got rid of much of the storage, which was a foolish, short-sighted move uh, some years ago. Now all countries are building up their storage capacity. They need to fill the storage tanks up with gas some have been able to fill quite a lot. If the winter is mild, it won't be too much of a problem. If the winter is very cold, there will be shortages nevertheless. I think by next year, when winter comes around again, they will have found alternative supplies. Within a year, it's possible to make different arrangements. Other countries sell gas and oil. The Middle East, of course. America itself, uh, with uh, fracking, has a lot of shale gas and is beginning to export some of it to Europe. Uh, and then other countries, I mean, one thinks of oil producers around the world, as a, um, Azerbaijan, of course, uh, and uh, places such as Venezuela. All of them can produce uh, plenty of energy. The question is, how quickly and easily is it possible to get it to the storage tanks in Europe? It's possible some people will be upset by uh, having to ration their energy, it's also possible many people will be very angry at the very high cost 
of gas. And of course, electricity, which is uh, dependent on gas for generation. Many, many countries use gas to power the power stations to generate electricity. So that goes up as well in price. And for many households, I mean in Britain, for example, prices are two or three times more than they were before, or even, even more. Uh, many governments have put a cap on the price, saying beyond that, uh, we will subsidise households. But of course, that will cost an enormous amount of money. Uh, and uh, there will be a lot of anger about the economic difficulties. But there's not much most governments can do.